Hey everybody, I wanted to tell you this week about a project that we embarked on called the Low Lake Level Treatability Study. As Lake Mead's levels continue to um, lower or have the potential to lower, we wanted to investigate and make sure that we were prepared from a treatment standpoint that the water quality coming into our plants and the water quality going into the community was able to be maintained and maybe even improved with respect to these conditions. So we put together a group of people from our water quality and treatment department and an outside consultant to look at these lowering lake level conditions. The study itself really talked about three main areas. The first was turbidity. The second was total organic carbon. And the third was algae. Those three are the main areas that we expect to be impacted as a result of lowering lake levels. Turbidity is essentially the measure of cloudiness in the water, and it really has to do with our ability to filter out particles. Total organic carbon is every situation, every lake that's out there has a certain amount of naturally occurring organic material in it. And when we chlorinate our water for disinfection, we can produce these disinfection byproducts, which are regulated. So we need to know about that as well. And algae is one of those components that as lowering lake levels continue and, and things change, more algae could be produced. And we need to make sure our system is available to remove all of those algal components. The filter rehabilitation project that we did at Alfred Merritt Smith was really key to our removal of turbidity and also our ability to handle additional algae that may be produced. The good news with this study is, is that our current treatment processes and techniques are very capable of handling what we have modeled and shown to be the potential water quality impacts at these lowering lake levels really good news. We're planners, we've put projects in place uh, in the past which are paying off now as we look towards these future possibilities. The report did also give us a kind of a roadmap as to how some of the things that we could do just to make sure that we were prepared for any future regulatory changes or conditions we don't anticipate. And so I wanted just to reassure you that as we face these circumstances, and as we know we are an organization of planners, that we are prepared for the future and we can even do a little bit more work to ensure that we are completely prepared in, for any eventuality.